with Zion Williamson returning to play, doing some 5-on-5 scrimmages, the New Orleans Pelicans are starting to look like a real legitimate contender in the West. That and Kevin Durant and Steve Nash seem to have had a conversation lately leading into training camp that can hopefully make amends. That and more will be discussed, so stay tuned. How's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel. This is Courtside Digest, bringing you the latest and greatest of NBA news. Like always, we're on our road to 2,500 subs, so if you could just like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to show your grandmas. I see the analytics. I know you grannies are watching my beautiful brown face, so please, please give us a, help us help us get to 2,500 subs. I'd really appreciate it. But first, first up, we're going to talk about the Pelicans, a threat in the West. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not joking. This is, it's, it's no meme. It's, it's nothing to laugh at. I mean, we all know the Pelicans have not been a team of, of notoriety in the past few years. I mean, you had you had Brandon Ingram, you had Lonzo Ball, you had Josh Hart when you trade away uh, Anthony Davis, and, and the team looked like a really good young team that could build, that could really become something in the years to come. Prior to that, with Anthony Davis, the team was just a first-round exit year after year until they traded him. But now, with Zion Williamson looking healthy and looking good, the team looks like they can actually contend in the West, maybe be a top four, top five C team. But this tweet right here is bringing me a little bit of hope for the Pelicans. Apparently, Willie Green says Zion Williamson dominated in scrimmages with the team last night. He noted Zion's force and speed were really impressive. I mean, that right there, that that is promising for all Pelicans fans watching this. Just, just hear me out. Zion's been hurt. He's been hurt for the past few seasons, not really getting a lot of play. But the small sample size that we have seen Zion, he's he's easy, easily a 20 and 10 guy. Showed his range a little bit too, that he can, you know, shoot from the three. And I think in one of those games, he was like six of seven from three. They just let him just shoot wherever he wanted. With Zion Williamson being the focal point of this young New Orleans Pelicans team, the sky's the limit. The, the, the Pelicans go as far as Zion will take them. With the leadership of, of C.J. McCollum, with the talent of Brandon Ingram, when you've got Jackson Hayes and Herb Jones, some, some, some really good young talent around Zion, yeah, this team is going to dominate in the West. Teams like the, like the Memphis Grizzlies, the Dallas Mavericks, even the Golden State Warriors should be aware of the New Orleans Pelicans. You heard it here first, folks, and I believe it. I stand by it 110%. With, like I said, with Brandon Ingram on the wing, Zion Williamson down low, you got Jackson Hayes, you got CJ McCollum leading this team. The formula for success is there. And it, I'm not saying that they're going to win the whole thing. I don't believe that they're going to make the finals. But this could be the start of something really good in New Orleans and they can finally start to get into contention that somewhere that they've never been before. But up next, we got to talk about Steve Nash and Kevin Durant. Apparently, they have squashed their beef. Now, over the over the summer, well, even before the summer, the, the Nets were the only team in the postseason that got swept. They lost in four games to the Boston Celtics, who eventually made it to the uh, NBA Finals and lost to the Golden State Warriors. But since then, during offseason, Kevin Durant had requested a trade that, that just stopped and halted all of free agency. Players weren't going anywhere. Teams were making trades. Everybody, think Mama was calling in, asking how much for Kevin Durant. But a little bit after that, reports came out that Kevin Durant sat with the owner and said, either you trade me or you get rid of Steve Nash and the GM. The GM, who was the new GM that they brought on once Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving came to Brooklyn, and then Steve Nash was a coach that both Kevin Durant and Kyrie signed off on. So to me, it was a little weird that you want the people that were supposed to help you to leave, but it was all smoke and mirrors. The owner wasn't wasn't going for none of that bull jive, and no one was fired. Kevin Durant wasn't traded, and he stayed put. But as a head coach, hearing that your star player wants you out, it I mean it doesn't. I me personally, I want to go for that level of disrespect. That really wouldn't sit right with me. That my first time as a head coach of a championship contending team that can really be up there, and my star player wants me gone after he wanted me to be the coach. Doesn't sit right with me. I'm pretty sure that that didn't sit right with Steve Nash. But apparently the two had a conversation. Steve Nash on Kevin Durant wanting him fired. Families go through things like this, go through adversity, go through disagreements. He said he and Katie got together and talked it out. I also found that apparently the conversation really wasn't that lengthy. The two sat down, man to man, hashed it out, and just 
put it behind him. Just focus on the on, on the training camp and the season coming ahead and just try to get back into being a contending team in the East. Try to top the top the standings and be above the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics, who I'm pretty sure they're gonna want that get back. That getting swept, being the only team swept in the playoffs. I'm pretty sure that their first game against each other is going to be electrifying as long as everybody plays, including Kyrie Irving, But which I'm sure he will. I'm sure that game will be amazing. But I think going forward, this is great for that Brooklyn Nets team. They're trying to build something good. They didn't spend all that money to get Kevin Durant and Kyrie and trade away all those young players and all those picks to just give up in the first four years. They really had to, I mean, they, they they had the work cut out for them. You had to make it work. You had to make sure your players do play these games. You have to find the right coach. You have to put the right pieces around them. And now it really looks like Brooklyn has a shot this season. There's no mandate, so Kyrie can play. And all, all due respect to him for standing on his stance, Kevin Durant is healthy, so he can continue to play. They made some trades over the summer to try to help build around them. You have Steve Nash, who's a more experienced coach now. It all looks good to me. And so I think this conversation was definitely needed for the two of them to move forward and to really focus on the upcoming season. Up next, the Thunder and Hawks trade. Just the other day, um, I saw I got a little, a little tweet from Shams that the Thunder and Hawks made a trade, and the names of the players involved and, and the picks involved may not have jumped out at you. The, you know, the tweet was kind of just an under-the-radar tweet, but it had bigger implications than most people think. The official details on the VIT trade make it even better deal for OKC. The amendments on the previous Hawks pick owed to OKC means the Thunder turned a player they were likely to waive due to a roster crunch into a two second round picks. Two second rounders, much better than waving a player. And that player that they did get back from the Hawks was Mo Harkless. And apparently in the trade, it was just Mo Harkless going from Atlanta to OKC for Vit and a second round pick. But apparently there was a pick owed. Not sure where that pick was owed, but apparently, but apparently the Hawks owed them another pick. So they had to toss that in there, which which is great, as as you know, as I know, as we all know, the Thunder are trying to rebuild. They're trying to retool around their young core and their young players, and, and just acquire as much draft capital as possible for the next four, five, six years of just being in the lottery, drafting the best talent, developing the best talent, and try to get back to the old days of of Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. But up next, we are going to talk about Cavs interested in Crowder. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are still talking about Jay Crowder. The man who was on the Phoenix Suns for the last two seasons, who was integral for their for their championship run that got halted by Giannis and the Bucks, who then wanted out of Phoenix and apparently just didn't want to be there anymore. And as I said on the last video yesterday, how his trade destinations could have been Memphis, Dallas, Miami. Boston maybe, but apparently the Cavs are showing interest. Just a little tweet here from Legion Hoops. The report is the Cavaliers are said to have interest in, tra in trading for Jay Crowder. As many people know, Jay Crowder was originally on the on the Cavaliers. Jay Crowder is something of a journey, man. He's played here, he's played there. If if, if you're a fan of, of the NBA, he's probably played for your team. But it, this is a little bit more interesting for me because I, I have said on, on live that I want Jay Crowder to go to Philadelphia. I think that'll be a good fit. That could really help that team just be a surefire win for the championship. But if we're talking long term, that Cavaliers team could really use Jay Crowder, a veteran presence, someone who could help space the floor for Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, who could help develop the young players, who could really help Donovan Mitchell, who not isn't necessarily a playmaker, neither is Neither is Jay Crowder, but if you have someone like Donovan Mitchell who's going to who's going to command the ball a lot, you got someone like Jay Crowder who he can bail it out to in the corner for a quick three, who's a reliable three point shooter, about 35, 36 percent. I don't know. I mean, I think Jay Crowder going to the Cavs really wouldn't be that that bad of a trade, and I'm sure the Cavs would trade just maybe two bench players, maybe throwing a pick in there for Jay Crowder, wipe your hands with it, and that's all you got. I like that trade. I like the trade a lot. Darius Garland benefits, Donovan Mitchell benefits, Jared Allen. And Evan Mobley benefit, Jay Crowder benefits because last year they, the Cavs were right there. They they were right there to make it to the playoffs. So I think Jay Crowder added to the Cavs helps them get over that play and hump, especially with a very stacked East this season. But that's all I got for you guys today. I really do appreciate you guys rocking with me. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Like I said, share with your grandma. It's people like you to help people like me continue to make videos like this. So I really do appreciate it. Y'all take care. Peace out.